Abstraction is the first and most fundamental of the computational thinking skills. It is a process of reducing complexity to formulate generalized fundamental ideas or concepts removed from specific details or situations. So what does that mean? So let's take the example of a cricket ball. It can be abstracted as a ball in the same way that a soccer ball is also able to be abstracted as a ball, ball being a more general term. But a ball can also be abstracted to being a sphere, much as a sun is also a sphere. And a sphere itself can be abstracted to being a general term of a shape. This abstraction process is known as the ladder of abstraction. In another example, Sarah Smith can be abstracted to being a primary school teacher, a more generalized definition, because there are many different primary school teachers. But primary school teachers can be abstracted to the class of teacher, and teachers to the class of educators. For young children, they will have a very concrete view of the world. Their pet is Spot. Later, they can abstract this to it being a dog. Later still, to being an animal. Now, this is why the first computers were known as general purpose calculating machines. There were many machines before that could do specific tasks including complex computational tasks, but only ever that single task. The power of computers is in being able to be used for many different tasks. This is an important computational thinking skill because students will often identify a solution to a specific task or instance, solving a problem of Tom Jones not being able to find the keys to his master. And a solution derived would be great for Tom until he buys a different car, or lends his keys to someone else. A better solution is generalised to work for any human being, or for any type of car, or even better, any type of vehicle. Now the solution can also be used by Sarah Smith, who in not teaching needs to find the keys to a boat. But an even better solution would be to find the keys to anything requiring keys. And even better yet, to finding any object at all. This process of abstraction makes the solutions students derive much more useful in many different situations. Now, abstraction also changed the way that we think about problems in a very fundamental way. If we start the lowest rungs of the ladder in these examples, we still have to change our solution to become more generalizable each time we go to a higher level. And this was how most programming used to be done. Over time, however, we discovered that it was much easier to just take a generalized, higher level solution that someone else had made for another problem. And it would often be of use in the solution being developed for the problem we were considering. We might need to change it a little to suit a more specific context, but the abstracted general solution takes most of the effort out of the task. So if we are developing an app to help Tom find the keys to his master, we may be able to take a generalized solution that was developed, say, to help NASA scientists find life on other planets. But if they generalize their solution, it may be just as applicable to finding the keys for a master. We can also see this to a certain extent in the Scratch programming language, where students are encouraged to remix the solutions developed by other students, changing them to suit their particular problem. And more commonly in computer programming, software is written using collections, known as code libraries, sets of computer programming code written by others to do specific things. And these are defined by APIs, Application Programming Interfaces which detail how these small programs interact with other programs. This is the power of modern software programming. 
We usually do not write things from scratch. We modify generalized existing solutions. And the reality is we started doing this from the very beginning of programming. Binary, the very lowest level of programming, uses a series of zeros and ones as an abstraction of electrical signals or lack of electrical signals on a circuit board. So for example, the number one in 8-bit binary code is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And the number 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And so forth. The bit refers to how many places there are in each individual code message. Before computing, we have been encoding messages into abstracted forms for a long, long time. Smoke signals, semaphore flags, Morse code, and we can do the same with binary. Each letter has its own binary code. 011000001 is the code for the letter A. And here is my name written in binary. Early computers used 8-bit message groups, sets of 8, as this could encode all the letters and numbers, and they named these 8-bit groups bytes. But modern computers are now much more powerful and need many more instructions to be encoded. So many computers now use 64-bit groups. So you may have heard of 32-bit computers, 64-bit computers. But binary coding is a very, very difficult way of giving instructions. And over time, this was itself abstracted into what we call machine code, providing a specific set of letters and numbers that represent each sequence of binary code. But machine code, while better, was still too difficult to see what individual instructions meant. So we developed programming language commands, each command an abstraction of a series of machine code instructions. So the command print is actually an abstraction of machine code x09, which in binary is this. More recently, we have abstracted programming commands into the pictures and shapes that you would have used in your programming activities. Each block, as we call these pictures, is an abstraction of a programming command or series of commands. And these can be arranged together to form more complex programs themselves. For example, draw a circle. And we call this a procedure or module. It is a further abstraction of the sequence of individual commands required to do what it describes. The app building program that you will use in your programming activity this week is another example of abstraction. In this, we drag and drop the elements found on mobile apps, keyboards, buttons, a voice recorder, and without the need to worry about how the keyboard or voice recorder module works, by just knowing its API, or what inputs it needs and outputs it can produce, we can link it to buttons that start and stop recordings and define where such recordings will be saved and maybe another button to retrieve saved recordings. And quite quickly, we have programmed a usable solution to a problem. Over time, students will wish to do things where there are no pre-existing modules and they will need to understand more and more complex aspects of programming in order to modify existing modules, or create their own new ones. But when starting out, and for a great amount of programming, they can rely upon the power of abstractions to address many problems.